Good morning and welcome back. We are in Bolivia once again. This is the High Altiplano and we're at Laguna Blanca right now, headed back towards the flooded salt flats. And in this video, I wanna share with you guys a few ideas that I've got about how I can change up this itinerary and do things a little bit different in the Altiplano region. So that all starts right now. Let's go. All right, and welcome back to Laguna Blanca. This is an absolutely beautiful photo spot just near the border with Chile. And we, uh, we got up at about 5.30 this morning to get an early transfer up from 2,500 in San Pedro, where the last video was, to 4,500 meters and the border crossing at Hito Cajon, which is uh, quite the distance to drive, I mean, vertically, to over two kilometers of gain in like, I don't know, maybe half an hour. So uh, luckily we're all acclimatized and it's not affecting us too much, but we had a beautiful sunrise at the border while we waited for, uh, for the border guards to wake up. And uh, there was a huge line of cars actually too. So I'm glad we got up so early because we crossed uh, very quickly. So here we are in Bolivia. It's about two hours past sunrise and we're getting some incredible photographs here. Um, this landscape is just out of this world. You've got freshwater streams uh, running into the lake, creating this amazing algae in the foreground, and then volcanoes off in the background with perfect reflections. So it's good for the polarizer, good for soft grads if you got them. Uh, but that said, it's not necessary. You know, the guys were making fun of me for using two soft grads. They're saying, why are you putting more glass in front of already good glass? Because nowadays with these high resolution sensors and uh, some post-processing skills, you can really create a nice example. Example, no, result in, uh, in Photoshop or Lightroom anyway. So but yeah, let's continue our journey. We're gonna drive through the Altiplano today towards VMI. We have just stopped on the side of the road because there is an Andean fox here. And this is the first one we've seen in the entire trip. And uh, they used to be a lot more common. You can see him, he just got up, going for a little walk. Absolutely beautiful uh, wild animal up here in the high Altiplano. And uh, I was saying to, uh, to our guide, Marco, where are all the foxes? And he actually said that during the pandemic, a lot of them died of starvation because they were eating from the refugios and from the accommodation spread throughout the Altiplano. The people would feed them leftovers and the tourists and the chefs and the cooks and whatnot from, uh, from all these places where you can stay. And um, during the pandemic, when nobody was coming here, a lot of those foxes uh, starved to death, which is a really sad story, but I am very happy to see one here because that shows that they are still obviously surviving and uh, probably back to uh, their natural, um, what do you call it, diet. And this one looks super healthy. So beautiful uh, wildlife that we've seen here. And uh, that's, yeah, great photos, great B-roll, and a nice, nice looking animal. Foxes, El Zorro.
All right, and we have made it to Melku Cueva. This is the uh, next little town where we're gonna stop and spend the night. And this is crazy. This is the other side of the Altiplano. Look at how green this is. This is the part of, uh, of this kind of region of Bolivia that I've never been to before. When I used to work as a G-Adventures tour leader, we always did kind of the more touristy route, which goes up along Laguna Colorada and uh, Laguna Hionda um, and San Cristobal, all of what we did in the second video as part of this series. And uh, now we're coming back around the other way, which is sort of how I designed this itinerary in the first place was to be kind of a big circle. And uh, I'm gonna talk about the changes in just a bit because I do want to, uh, to share with you guys the insights that I've gained as part of the scouting tour and how I wanna change the next adventure photography uh, trip. And why I wanted to do the scouting tour in the first place is to test out these things, to see you know, what's possible, what's possible with a bigger group. And, uh, and if I want to add more time at specific locations because it looks like I'm definitely going to be making some some pretty serious changes to this itinerary for next year. Here's a very good example of adventure photography. We have just found an awesome, awesome composition and uh, it's on no maps. It's on no blogs. There's no information about this. We're just driving by and found what we think is just going to be absolutely perfect for sunset. So I'm going to set up in Melco Cuevo, show you a bit more of the drone because this place is awesome. And the sunset is popping off all around us. This is absolutely incredible. We're the only people here, the only photographers down by this little stream. And it's proving to be a bit of a challenge because these clouds are super, super vibrant, like crazy. Like, I don't know if you can see this above me. Look at this cloud here. This is just out of this world. We can see the moon so well, tons of crazy color. And this is what it's all about chasing adventure photography tours and trips to uh, to sort of hidden unknown places. I mean, Bolivia is known, but there's parts of the Altiplano that are still, in my opinion, undiscovered. And Melco Cuevo is exactly one of those uh, locations. So I'm excited to explore a little bit more around this area. And we're gonna try and do Astro this evening and then sunrise, of course, tomorrow. And uh, and I already have seen a few parts of the on the map that look just amazing. But like, look at this grass. I feel like I'm walking on a carpet with this beautiful river flowing through, mountains in the background, nobody here, it's wide open. Amazing. All right, and good morning from the next day. It is just after 6 a.m. We've got enough light now to uh, to vlog. And look at this beautiful scene. This is a uh, sort of a canyon with a small river flowing through it towards the hotel that we're staying at here in Melquicuevo, Via Mar, um, uh, Bolivia. And uh, we just got amazing astro, really, really beautiful Milky Way shots uh, over the last sort of hour and a half. And uh, this is definitely going to be part of, uh, of next year's trip. So one of the things that I'm trying to do uh, during this scouting mission is reassess the itinerary, reassess uh, the locations and uh, the timings and what I'll be able to do with a bigger group. And, uh, and this is definitely going to stay on the itinerary because I had never been here before. This was the one part of the, uh, the circle that is new to me. And uh, this is the, the best part of photography. You guys know this from being uh, travelers and, and landscape photographers, but showing up to a place where you haven't been, scouting it on Google Maps and trying to look for images and not really finding uh, good results. And then, you know, having that intuition or that feeling that you think it's gonna be good. And then showing up here and seeing a scene like this is just, that's what it's all about. So very happy about that. And uh, going to sort of tweak things so that we have more of this and less of Chile, which is interesting. I think I'm gonna to have to change the name of this from uh, Atacama Adventure to Altiplano Adventure. But we'll talk about more about that when we get to the salt flats. We're headed uh, back to the flooded salt flats today. And 
and welcome to the Hotel Luna Salada. This is one of two very fancy hotels that just outside of Uni on the uh, the like border of the salt flat. This is only like maybe 10 minutes from driving into the salt and this hotel is made of salt, conveniently. Check out these walls, salt brick walls, beautiful hotel. These uh, The two hotels have been recently built. Palacio de Sal is where we first stayed. That's in the first video of this series. And then this one is uh, Luna Salada, and this is where we're staying tonight. And I wanted to show you guys this because the local operator that we're working with, Kentuta, wanted me to go and stay at both hotels to decide which one to work for my group in 2025. And I think it's this one. This hotel is really, really nice. Not knocking Palacio de Sol, obviously also very, very nice. But uh, look at this, pool table, ping pong table, come on. And the, the rooms have views of the salt because this one is kind of up on a hill. So very cool hotel. And uh, one of the things that I want to change for next year in the Altiplano adventure is absolutely to stay here for more than just one night because we're going to need a lot more of this. And I'll explain a little bit more of that when we get out to the salt. Two. All right, and how about this for a background? Welcome back to the Salar de Uni in March. Absolutely flooded the biggest mirrored surface in the world. Incredible spot for landscape photography and for adventure travel and travel photography and just experiencing something really, really unique. And uh, that's why I want to do this final piece to camera to talk about how this trip has sort of evolutionized and changed and, uh, and how my brain kind of works in regard to doing a scouting trip and then coming away with the final product. So things are changing, especially with this tour. So first of all, the name right away, we're going to change it from Atacama Adventure to the Altiplan adventure the Bolivian Altiplano adventure and cut San Pedro out immediately because I've noticed with feedback from the guys and from the uh, our experience crossing the border as I mentioned earlier in this video <clears throat> just took way too long and uh, and I don't want to sacrifice that valuable time uh, to visit San Pedro even though San Pedro is really really cool it's uh, it kind of is like a destination all in itself you could go to Calama and San Pedro and do the the Chilean Atacama as a separate trip so the Bolivian Altiplano uh, has the salt flats which is where we're going to sort of focus our time and really stretch out the time as well so instead of moving like one night two nights one night one night two nights you can do something more like three nights one one night, two nights, one night, two nights, something like that. I, I want to try and really dial in the details with uh, the local tour operator, Cantuta, and with Chris Sarge, who runs uh, Minuteman Pizza, and his wife, Susie. They've been a, an extreme help for me, as well as the guys on the trip. Big shout out to them and uh, and having trust in me to come here on the scouting tour to uh, to experience this, you know, kind of blind per se, for lack of a better term. I mean, as long, even though I was a tour leader here from 2009 to 2013, that was 11 years ago, shit changes. Bolivia has changed big time. I've changed as a photographer, as a tour leader. And uh, and it was a, very important to come down here and make sure that we can create the best quality product possible for the next tour in 2025. And then even if the demand is still there to come back in 2026, because look at this place. There's nothing like this on earth. We're so lucky to be here. I got to pinch myself sometimes this is just phenomenal uh, absolutely incredible photos incredible scenery create beautiful prints to take home and uh, right now we can we can do it you know we can travel here and we can come here and uh, and experience this so now's the time and working with you know the local operators and uh, being able to to sort of practice my Spanish and, and get better at understanding the culture here in Bolivia the last 10 days have really opened my eyes to how I can change things going forward so this is uh, this is gonna be good it's gonna be really exciting I think I can really tighten up the itinerary and create you know more opportunity for epic photos like this uh, even if the weather's shit so that's the idea um, so look forward to that I'm gonna end the video here and if you are interested in seeing more of the the uh, Astro that we're gonna do tonight stay tuned also follow on Instagram I'll be posting updates and stories there and the community tab of this channel and uh, on my website of course I want to update it with all the photos that I've been able to capture during this trip and uh, yeah all that stuff I want to see your comments too below because this is been one hell of an adventure it's been one hell of a ride and uh and i hope you guys have enjoyed it because this place is something special Oof, sun's going down i want to try and capture it now so i'm going to sign off it's been a blast and i will see you guys in the next video 
but for now I'm heading home to reunite with my beautiful wife and our lovely son, Mateo Jack, and I cannot wait. So uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Keep it real and I'll see you in the next video. Greg, what's that on your camera? Oh my God, just a second. Is that one grad? No, it can't be. It's two grads. Mine is such a freaking loser. You have two grads on your camera. And a polarizer. And a polarizer. I am right now aroused. I'm just telling you right now. This is a, what a real photographer uses. I am not a real photographer.